Are you sure you want to start training? Yes. <coughs> All right, guys. Welcome to Lim Motorsports, and we are here with our guest Nicholas Hammond, and uh, he is the GT Academy 2014 USA winner, and now he is a professional driver for the Nismo or Nissan uh, racing team. Welcome, Nick. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I appreciate you having me on tonight. Thank you very much. Sounds good, man. Um, I'm going to be showing some footage on this side, but you don't worry about it. We'll be just talking. So first is first. Uh, definitely you have the passion for racing, like all of us watching you do. And um, we've heard that your dad influenced you a lot on that and your grandpa too. So tell us a little bit about your passion and how it all started. Well, it's probably like a lot of you guys where I was growing up, loved racing and, and couldn't get enough of it. Um, ever since I was little, I enjoyed looking at car magazines, watching races, and just playing sim racing kind of felt, gave me that passion that I could. And then when I was six, seven years old, I was able to get go-karting at our local kart track. And that kind of really set set in the tone what I really wanted to do for, for the rest of my life. And then I just was able to kind of continue on and my dad was lucky enough we ended up going to SCCA club racing which was a lot of fun and then I kind of at that moment in my life where it was you love racing but unless you have millions of dollars and there, you couldn't really do it at a professional level and then uh, I decided to go to UNC Charlotte for mechanical engineering to be kind of a test driver but then all of a sudden I heard about this GT Academy program and really it started to take off. Okay, so you hear about the GT Academy program, and what's the next thing you do? I, I, I always, in uh, 1995 or 1999, when I was like six years old, I started to do a lot of just racing, sim racing and stuff. I played Gran Turismo 2, and I always kind of enjoyed playing Gran Turismo and other sim racing. And then all of a sudden, I, when I heard about GT Academy the first year, I was kind of bummed out because I wasn't old enough to compete in it. But I remember getting emails from my uncle and stuff, and he's sending me links and just how there's different physical aspects of it. And I did a lot of sports in, in high school and really enjoy the athletic side of it, so I knew, okay, that'd be a good, I'd be strong in that, that side of the competition. And then I'm like, well, I may, this is a pretty, pretty cool program, and I should really try to get in it. Okay. So then, so then the senior year, when I was a senior in high school, I tried to get in, and I wasn't, just wasn't quick enough. I think I was 100th or something in the, the live rankings. And then the next year I tried again in 60th, and then the following this year, this past year, I was quick enough just to get inside that top 32 and get a shot at New York. Wow. So you tried three times. The yep. first one was not even close. The second one, top yep. 60, and then the third yep. one was the charm. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Man, three times. So you were just spend. I mean, what did you do different from the beginning to the third time? Were you just getting experience through the sim and... I think so. I, basically, for me, I live out in kind of a country area where I don't have online high-speed internet. So luckily, I want to shout out to my sister and thank her for letting me That's come to the stream, stream online. Um, but I wasn't able to do a lot of online racing. So it was basically when I would do sim racing, it'd be on my computer against computer or against my dad just on a Saturday night kind of thing. So there wasn't I wasn't really to that next level. And then once I, I heard about GT Academy, I started to do a lot more more competitive racing and that's where I think it started to take off and then this past year or this two years ago for Christmas I got a G27 steering wheel awesome. so before that I was just on I think a Logitech um, the one before the Force GT driving force yep uh -huh. exactly yeah. that's what I had before that and that was always kind of a hindrance it always was something that I could say oh maybe the equipment makes a difference yeah, yeah, yeah. so then once I got the G27 I said oh we're all on equal equipment and it comes just down to speed awesome so you you get into the top 30 they fly you to New York and yes. so that was kind of a motivation blow but once I got to New York City and it was just all about getting in a you're all on equal equipment in those in the sim rigs I just had a blast and, and you're you're having so much fun with it that you don't even you kind of forget about the competition and you just you just want to win at all costs I think we just lost a little bit of that uh, through oh. the stream apologies to the viewers myself and well Nick is in a good spot but myself I'm not so we might be on and off but you can watch the replay edit it and nice and neat 
so if you can repeat just that last part uh, once you're in those top 30 and you're in the sim competing against the other guys. Yep, so that was when we were in New York City. We were all in different sim rigs. So there was, I think, three races, three groups of races kind of going on at once. So that different tracks, I think it was three or four laps each. So just about getting a rhythm and trying not to make any mistakes. That was the biggest thing because you were, I remember my first race that I ran, I was second. And then the guy in front of me made a mistake, and I was able to win that race. And awesome. it was just all about being consistent and not making mistakes and just trying to go as fast as you can and get a good solid finish. And you moved from the sim to a real car. How do you do there? It was good. I never, growing up doing a lot of like car racing stuff at Road America and go-karting, I never ever did an autocross before. So when we were, all of a sudden we showed at a parking lot and we were doing autocross, I'm like, one of the one thing that I'm not prepared for, but... <laughs> It was it was really really good. It went good. It went nice and smooth, and I was really happy once we got that kind of part out of the way and just kind of to see that it started to become a reality that I have a shot at getting inside that top twelve. Do you feel like your experience at uh, racing at Road America and a little bit of that help you with your car control and different things about under? Okay. What is she talking about your life and? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First bench. Uh, yep. You were last. Yeah. What what goes through your mind? I mean, you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it was very. That part was probably the, the one of the probably the scariest moment of the entire competition. I thought I showed up having some on track experience. I kind of was like, oh, this is. I'm glad the gaming part's out out of the way because that was where I thought I was going to be weakened and the the car stuff I was going to be strong in. And then I'm last at the first benchmark, and it just was kind of a a real shock. And I just said, okay. I got to really buckle down here and give it all I have because, like I said on the show, I, I I thought at that moment I was going home next. I just found the footage where it shows that part where uh, it shows the scores and you last. Yeah. Um, so now it moves from being last, and the next benchmark is the uh, endurance, the favathlon or whatever, the different yep. types of. Yeah. So there's Nick. He was last in the first benchmark by like that was one second and forty two, um, and then he moves on to the second benchmark, which is the um, the Favatalon. So yeah. you were quoted the most fit of the group, and you left everyone behind on the running part and the bicycle also. Uh, and I mean, you had a huge advantage, um, and and, and Mr. Sullivan said, you know, I mean, he's, he's got a huge lead, but he doesn't need to calm down to make a mistake. So tell us a little bit about how you prepare physically for the GT Academy. I know, like I said before, growing up in high school, I did a lot of sports. I did track in, in high school, and then when I went to, to college, I still did a lot of running. I kind of enjoy running, and, and I would every week do, do probably go out and do a three-, four, four-mile run every week at school. And then once I heard about the GT Academy program, I started stepping it up running three times a week. And then after I found out I was going to Silverstone, I ran every day, um, three miles every day. And then I would go weightlift Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at a local community college. And then I always just, that was some of the stuff that I thought that was easy to prepare for. So I thought, you know what, I kind of enjoy running and working out. And that's, that's kind of stuff that's a gimme points or stuff that you can really really show how well and how dedicated you are to this program. That's awesome, man. So preparing for that um, obviously led you to be the most fitted of the group. And how are you feeling once you start running and once you start just, were you looking back? Were you like, man, I have a huge advantage? Or were you just like, I just got to stay focused? I mean, yep. what was going through your mind as you're running and, and pulling away in the lead? Well, I remember when I was running, I, I remember seeing even before GT Academy, everyone else was showing their workout stuff on, on kind of through Facebook stuff. So I thought I knew kind of everyone else was in good shape. So when I started running and I passed Tommy there, I thought he was he was letting me kind of go ahead and then he was going to blow by me at the end. Right. So I was still a, little, a little scared at that point. But once I climbed that final, that hill, and then I kind of saw that we were getting in the cars next, I just kind of knew, okay, I got to make – make the most time I can because you never know what can happen. You make a mistake and something else, you want to just... I, I knew from my benchmark, like you said before, where I was last, I had to prove myself in this quadrathlon if I wanted to stay 
Were you surprised that they had you guys pull in the cars instead of getting on? Yeah, that was uh, interesting. I mean, how you you like what? That was an interesting challenge when it first started. I I kind of like, oh, this is the quadra. I remember when I, I got asked in the beginning what was going to be my favorite event of the entire the week, and I remember the quadrathlon just from previous seasons where that was something I really really enjoyed and thought I was going to be strong at. And then when I saw one of the events we were going to be pulling a car, I'm like. I don't think I'm I'm not that strong lower body compared to some of these other guys, so I was a little worried there. But once I got through that and into the running part, it was it was a lot of fun and it was a blast. That's awesome. How did the um, it's it's not it's a Formula car, but I don't know, it's a Formula 2000 maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's like a 1600. Yeah, Formula 1600. How did that feel? It was good. It was a lot of fun. We did uh, a couple laps kind of before that, so kind of just to get comfortable with the car. And then when we got to the competition, it was I kind of asked some of the instructors for some some guide help and some advice before we had the quadrathlon, and and I think that helped a lot. So that when I hopped in there after kind of running, and when you're tired and you're kind of exhausted, that you can just get your mind focused on racing and getting those clean laps in. Awesome. So I want to ask you now, uh, before GJ Academy, and then I'm going to ask you later after GJ Academy, your experience as a driver, as a race car driver, uh, you know, how were your experience before GT Academy and, you know, what are some of the tips that you had uh, for everybody out there that are starting out or just getting to know the sport? What are some of the things that you apply at the track before GT Academy and even during GT Academy? Um, you know, what are some of the things that you were reminded of yourself? Like, okay, I gotta hit the apex, or I gotta slow down enough, or you know. Yep, I know. Before GT Academy, I was more just about um, getting kind of clean, smooth in, smooth out. I mean, kind of slow down and go fast. That kind of aspect and building up, where you start out slow, get a feel for it, and then go faster and faster. So I just say that was some of the stuff that I kind of got taught and learned before GT Academy. But after GT Academy, I, I was more so where you get all the instruction from all the, the nice instructors through GT Academy program. It was a lot more of just trying to be fast right away, where you gotta you got to physically and mentally prepare yourself before you get in that car, just by running through breaking points, turning points in your head, so that when you get in that car right away, you can go out and run quick times, your out lap all the way through your last lap. So I'd say kind of the turn-ins and stuff like that, I'd all kind of knew before GT Academy. But the major difference for me personally was just to go out quick right away and just have that different mindset where maybe beforehand I was more of endurance, just kind of build up slowly. But through GT Academy, I had to be more of a sprint guy where I was right out right away as quick as I can go. That's great, man. That's awesome. So um, you're moving on, GT Academy, and obviously everybody on the show when they got to the uh, oval track, the short track, they're like, uh, we worry more about Tony and Nick is fine. He's, he's not yeah. going to win this thing or whatever. <laughs> our most, you know, our biggest enemy is Tony and Tony and Tony. Uh, was that your turning point? Or tell me just whenever you felt in the whole GT Academy, obviously you started off last and then you won your benchmark, which is awesome. But what was the really turn point where you're, whenever you just reach that next level and you're like okay I'm stepping out in front now and I'm taking control and going for it you know yep so through that since that first benchmark I always kind of felt like I was like you said behind and then I say I think the moment that was a turning point for me was at the Jim Connor course where I Tommy basically from everyone or from my side of it looked like when he was a strong one of the strongest competitors out there. So when I was able to beat him in the gym Kana and, and move on and that was a nerve wracking challenge to begin with. So after I beat him and <laughs> I started set, sitting down and thinking about it, I'm like, I actually have a shot at winning this. So that was the the turning point for me where it's like I didn't I didn't knew that we're all battling for, for tents here, tents there. After that, Jim Khan, I thought I, I finally told myself, you know what, I actually do have a realistic uh, shot at, okay. at winning GT Academy. I thought it would be earlier, um, but it's no. good to know <laughs> it was great. Yeah. I, I mean, I always enjoy watching all the GT Academies. It's, it's just like, you know, I stayed up too late just watching just the episodes. Even though I've watched them before, I keep just, I keep just yeah. watching. No, it's, it's fun to, yeah, even for, 
after you, especially when you're participating in it, it's even better just to watch. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's talk about, let's see if I can bring up the last race. And, um, you know, take us to kind of like your preparation for that. Um, you know, the night before, sitting in the locker room. Uh, by the way, how were the locker rooms? Were they? They were good. Them? Yeah, it was. It was unique. It was like you're kind of in a military camp, but you got to drive cars every day. So that was. It made you could kind of deal with the the staying all in one room when you get to wake up in the morning and drive Nissan GTRs and Nissan 370s. Awesome. Uh, so the night before, you know, the day before even, um, the morning time and you know the race. Just take us through that experience again. Yep. So I remember waking up that morning where you kind of, we'd always eat breakfast or you'd shower, eat breakfast, get ready for the day. And, and that was one where, and then we hopped in, uh, that's where we actually did the, we did the braking challenge that morning where we would, that speed up to 70 and kind of turn into the pit, pit markers and stop. Right. But after that, um, then they took us right over to the, the room where they asked us, are we 100% in? And that's where Tommy kind of said he's, he's got family commitments, so he called out. And then all of us got taken and, and put in cars right away and took laps with Danny, Boris, wow. and Rob. So it was kind of a quick transition where we knew we were in the final the final race. So that kind of it was good for me because it was where you just you don't have time to think about it and overanalyze. You're just put in a situation and just reacting and driving the best you can. So then after that, we kind of had maybe a few minutes where we did some more filming stuff in between where we did the ride-alongs with the instructors to qualifying. So it was just about kind of sitting down, like you said, closing your eyes, preparing mentally for what what was about to happen, and just doing your best because that's all you can really do. I just found the footage of the, I think it's after the ride-alongs, but okay. Tell me about the. Um, yeah, they're watching. Uh, tell me about the the ride-alongs. There, there's it, you right there. Yeah, it was a it was a lot of fun. It was. For me, I remember getting, when I went to GT Academy, I said, hey, I just want to make it to that final race, and, and if I get beat on speed, then it wasn't meant to be, but just to, to get to drive Danny Sullivan, Rob Barf, and Boris sit around the track and All have them three. kind of critiquing, critiquing you was definitely a dream come true. Yeah. So that from just being able to learn from them as well and where you get their input was, was helped me a lot in that final race. And I and I could just see, too, in the beginning where I'm a little slower, and by the end, I was trying to apply all the information that they gave me. I felt like it helped a lot. Yeah, you, I mean, Boris said that you just, he didn't like you too much because you learned too quick. And <laughs> <laughs> it was like he was picking up everything that I was saying so fast. Yeah. Uh, where do you think you, you, you earned that skill to be able to adapt to the moment, take it in, apply it now, and do it well. Like, is there any time? I mean, I know I'm taking you like thinking a no. lot, but anywhere that like, you feel like, I think I learned this in such and such. You know. Yeah, I think through through school and stuff, and through racing, go karting. That was something where I always always wanted to get better and and do the best I could. So I'd say I just tried to. There's even if if you listen to someone for advice, and even you might be a 30 minute conversation. And you get two out of those two minutes something that really is important. That was worth that was worth an hour right there, even even your whole day, just because you can you can learn from that information that could help you pick up time. And that's where I think I I value everyone's opinion and everyone's information. So I try my best to make it work and do the best to make me faster. Were you nervous at any point that you were driving uh, this professional and legends? Uh, I remember when I was with. When I was with Danny, I, I forgot to turn off the like the traction control, so we we're going around the corner, and all of a sudden it's hesitating, and Danny's like, "Hit the gas, hit the gas," and he was getting kind of, his <laughs> voice was going up, and I'm like, I, "It just it's not going." So then I was moving, I was touching the button, shut it off, and then he's like, "What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you playing with over there?" So I was a little scared there, <laughs> but it was definitely uh, after that I was able to get settled in for a few laps and show him that I it, I was supposed to be there and I have a shot at winning this. Awesome. That's great. That's funny. What? Okay, so from that moment in time, what are some of the, and, and you can mention a few, maybe three, but what are some of the things that have stuck with you uh, in your racing career now that they have told you? Uh, that yep. 
Um, I know Boris mentioned a lot about just shifting, where I've got to be quicker and, and faster with my shifting. I grew up when you're driving your own stuff or just working on your own stuff, I was always easy and kind of taking care of it. But that was a good transition where Boris said, hey, you're, if you're going to win this, you're going to be a professional race car driver. So you can, you can beat on this stuff to make it go faster. So that was probably one of the things that stuck with me. Um, I remember Rob was really good with just teaching me just different lines and different corners that you necessarily you can try something different at one time and then next lap try it again or try something completely different. So that stuff I believe helped a lot for me just to kind of learn and as, as you go out on a practice session or something that you can try to, to get more speed and if it doesn't work try something else. So that was definitely something. And same with Danny. Danny was good where he taught you just different lines going into different corners that I kind of felt even though we didn't race on that same track for the final race is what we did with the ride along that same information you could apply to the international circuit that afternoon. That's awesome. Um, and if any of the viewers out there uh, have any questions or comments, feel free. I believe I'm watching your comments. So far there hasn't been any. Um, but I think I'm watching him here. I'm not, I'm not sure. But uh, uh, you know, if you have any questions for Nick, uh, go ahead, feel free, and post it there, and then we'll tackle it, and he'll tackle it. And um, now we're going to move on. We're watching some of the uh, alumni, GT Academy guys. Okay. And we're moving on to the last race for GT Academy. So, you know, talk to me about lights. I yeah. mean, you're out lap, sitting on the car. Were you nervous? Were you shaking? Were you sweating? You were calm? What, what were your feelings? I was, I remember getting right before I got into the, the I was strapping out just before I was going to turn out onto the racetrack, Boris quick stuck in and said, hey, this is the one, one moment that will change the rest of your life or change your racing career. So I was like, Thanks, oh, that's Boris. more, <laughs> I thought it was good motivation that way. I remember doing the lap, lining it up, and the, the difficult part was just make sure that they line you up and then you go around and then you line up again, not to go past your mark where they line you up. So I think I was more nervous about not going past my mark. I forgot kind of what was all at stake. <laughs> so then I just lined up, and the lights, I got a decent start with the lights, and, and uh, I kind of felt just with the stuff that I did racing at home and with go-karting, I felt like it was okay, just another, just another race, and do the best I can, and whatever happens, happens. So that was good, and after the, the lights went out, I was able to get a, a nice jump, and then uh, that first lap, like I, like I said in my my changing through GT Academy, I was I kind of started out slow, mm -hmm. but then I started to build up. So that first lap, I was I had to be a little defensive, holding Mark back. Then after that, I was able to get some clean laps, and and each each lap, I learned something that helped a lot. Either break deeper in a corner, carry a little bit, maybe two miles per hour at that apex. So I was able to learn and adapt quicker to kind of improve my lap times. That's awesome. Any butterfly feelings before the start, or anything like that, or they were just gone immediately after? No, I. I'd say it was a little butterflies. I don't think at the, it, everything happens so fast in GT Academy week because it's just seven days of just full full tilt racing stuff, driving stuff, working out. I'd say you have time for them, but it, it was good where it's like they put you in a car, you're out on track, you don't really have time to think about it. So I would say I was just thankful to be at that area and get to this far in the competition, and now it was time to, to shoot out for the win. Awesome. You come in, so you're leading, we're watching you leading, and then Mark and Alex are battling out, and yeah. that, I think that helped a lot to, yes. to be able to pull you away. Are you watching the mirrors? I mean, are you looking at them and be like, okay, I'm good? Or I remember uh, a little bit, I, I just glanced in, into coming into, or before Stowe, that long back straight away, hanger straight, I'd look in the mirror and I saw those guys battling, so I'm like, oh, good, they're kind of <laughs> battling, pulling away a little. Yeah. And then I remember one time I went a little deep into Stoll, which is that that corner after the long straight. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to throw this away. I thought I was going off or going wide. Oh, but then after that, I was able to kind of calm down and, and settle in again and keep pushing. But it still, at that point, it didn't even set in what I was just about to win the race. It was just, just another race and, and doing the best that I could to, to prove that I wanted to be GT Academy champion. Awesome. So you come to the final lap. I'm going to see if I can try to fast forward a little bit. And um, you have it on the bag, basically. You, I mean, you're out there. Thanks. And uh, trying to find where you. Okay, so what were you feeling? I it, like so it wasn't the final decision yet. It, like 
It wasn't whoever wins this race is gonna win the academy. So you're standing there with the guys, all four guys, and you're standing there, and they're about to announce. You know, so what was going through your mind at that point? Um, at that point, I kind of was like, well, hopefully, I did all that I could to to be the to hopefully show the judges that I deserved to win or had a shot at winning. So at that point, I was happy with my performance. It was just a when you have a dream of just. I remember three years ago when I I heard about the program and. And I was like, oh, a really neat program. Hopefully someday I'll get to compete in it. And then to, to be standing there, win the final race, and, and did had, had a blast throughout the week and was one of the final competitors at the final race. I, whatever happened, I would, have been, I would have been mad if I didn't win. But I just had such a fun time there, and it was just a dream come true. That's awesome, man. So they just announced that you won. You have a huge smile on your face. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, you call your dad. Yeah, that, that was probably, that was one of the moments I'll remember for the rest of my life. Just uh, when you hear your name, that you're the GT Academy champion, I'll just I can freeze, I can like glance back in my my head that I just remember that moment like it was yesterday, and then to be able to call him and and tell him that I won I won GT Academy and all the all that hard work and ever since I was little he was the guy there that was either put me in a go kart, get me behind the wheel and reading, giving me car magazines, giving me advice on racing. So I felt like he he deserved to be there or be, deserved to to feel the emotion that I was that same way. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Um, so moving now to post being the winner of GT Academy, and the main thing was to get ready for Dubai. Yep. But you had to get your license, your racing license, so you had to do some races up to that point and earn certain points and race at night at Dunnington maybe and yep. do all these different things. So as soon as you, f you win, you're in the podium at GT Academy, what happens after? And, and run us through you know, that yep. time. So basically after winning GT Academy, that was on a, on a Friday night that we actually did that. So Saturday, um, I think I ended up kind of uh, that we had that next – that next day I flew out right away back home to actually flew back to Charlotte, North Carolina where I was going to school at the time. I withdrew from the university. <laughs> um, got, you got flingings, exactly. <laughs> I was the guy a week in uh, college that was moving out already, the drop out. Oh. And then uh, I moved all my belongings back home to Wisconsin and then I flew out that following week, that like Wednesday I think of that following. So I only had like two days at home so it was a pretty quick turnaround. And then I was basically in uh, London or in Milton Keys is where we stayed for two and a half months just doing a driver development program. So like you said, we were doing our races on the weekends to get those signatures for our international race license. And then we were doing fitness to kind of prepare for Dubai. Um, Go-karting kind of give us that longer stint, just race craft as well. And a lot of just sim, sim racing as well we did a lot where we'd go before we went to a lot of the different tracks like Snedderton or Donington we would do a good hour and a half session on the on, on GT Academy Sim just preparing for those. So it was just a it was a two and a half months of just pure enjoyment and fun. Mm -hmm. I joke with people every day I look forward to getting out of bed every every morning because I was either gonna go to the gym, go to the racetrack or the a Nismo lab, working on simulator work or it was truly the best two and a half months of my life. We have a picture of you uh pulling some rope, pretty straining. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We got it from your website, nicholashammond.com. Uh, how, how, so your workout before GT Academy and now your workout after being, uh, becoming a Nissan GT driver, is yep. it a big difference or kind of the same or? Uh, I'd say before I just did, I focused a lot on just running shorter distances and then maybe just some slight workout or just general weightlifting stuff. But all thanks to Pro Performance now through GT Academy, they give me a specific plan where I do a lot more running. So I probably increase my distance by that times two. I'm running more six miles, seven miles, and biking and just longer distance and longer time periods to kind of prepare me for those those longer stints, like at Dubai where I was in a car for two hours. You got to kind of physically and mentally prepare yourself for that. Was it hard? Was it challenging? Or were you taking it since you're an athlete from before? Were you taking it like okay? I'm this is good, or was like, man, whew, this is hard work. Or I mean, how was, how was the whole um, year? It was good. It was because we we track everything with with watches, and GT Academy kind of keeps an eye on it. 
So I think it was good where we had the three other competitors, um, Ricardo, Gaetan, and Ahmed, where we all kind of competing oh, yeah. against each other, the physically wise. <laughs> So it was like if I if I thought about ah oh, you know I don't really feel like running today it's like oh I know Ricardo's gonna run or Gaetan's gonna run so I gotta go out and run so it was definitely that part definitely helped a lot I'm a very competitive person where I want to be the best that I can be so I say I never really there's days where you'd be like oh the gym again but once you get going and you're working out you kind of you start thinking about Dubai and and what you get to do and I was like I gotta keep working out because I I want to make the most of this opportunity so. Uh, run me through a day daily routine living in London so before the Dubai so you wake up eat breakfast and then yep. either go so, to the track or the gym so. exactly yep so we basically we wake up in the morning eat breakfast and we're off let's say we'd be off to Silverstone so then we'd be going maybe there was a track day at Silverstone and we'd be going out in in the race 370s that we raced that final race in and then we'd go with our driving instructors Rob or Charlie and then we'd maybe do three sessions of 15 minutes each where we'd go out, go on track, run a session, and then they'd sit down with us with data and kind of explain, okay, this is, you got to turn in earlier here, you got to get on the gas, you got to be braking harder there. And then after that, that would take us to lunchtime. And then maybe in the afternoon, we do a sim session and a chimp management session where it's, we kind of sit down with a, psych, a sports psychologist and we kind of discuss. Uh, what we have to do to prepare ourselves for Dubai or even to prepare ourselves to be better on the track and then maybe we'd also do some simulator work that afternoon as well training for the weekend race at Donington and then maybe that night we get done around four with that stuff we would go to the gym and then do a cardio workout and then some weights so it's like so, a full-time job basically. Yeah, it's a full-time job but it was wake up. yeah yeah that's awesome um, Eating, eating wise, how was? Uh, I know I'm, I'm sure they keep you on a diet. Not meaning like losing weight, but just yeah. certain foods that you gotta eat. Do you yep. have someone that is helping you with that, or do? You yep, um, Pro Performance kind of helped us with that in Milton Keys. They, I remember the first day or second day we were there. They kind of sat down with us and talked us good foods, bad foods, what we kind of need to get for to be prepared for for on the racetrack as a, as a race car driver. So we do a lot, I know, cereal stuff, I'm a lot of whole grain, but just different whole wheats and stuff, and with some, I like fruits and veggies a lot, banana, I normally have some cereal with a, a cut up banana in it for breakfast with with some uh, toast, and then uh, mm -hmm. lunch we'd kind of all make sandwiches and stuff, um, and just pretty general stuff, fruits and veggies was big, and just fresh fruit, and it was nice because where we lived, we were right above a supermarket, so we could kind of go there and always get fresh fruits and veggies, so that helped a lot. How about any uh, any soft drinks or any chips? No, any? Oh. No, no soft drinks, only orange juice in the morning, so that was one of the, I'm not, I wasn't a big soda drinker to begin with, but um, when you get to hop in a GTR or a 370Z race car, Nissan, that kind of makes, you can get rid of chocolate, yeah. uh, <laughs> ice cream, you know, it, it's all, it doesn't matter. So. Uh, Driving now that you're testing in London and driving before Road America, uh, talking about this physical part, do you feel different physically inside the car than you feel at Road America now? I mean, yeah, before yeah, I know for like in Dubai or whatever, even when we were doing races in our driver development program, I felt a lot more physically fit. Where before at Road America and even Blackhawk Farms down in Illinois, I was where you get out of the car and you kind of be. Towards the end of the race, your mind was starting to, and your body, <laughs> you're starting to get kind of tired and fatigued. But through GT Academy and the workout program, I felt like hour and a half when I was in the car, I get out and I was like I just got just woke up. So it's just like you feel you don't feel tired or you don't feel fatigued. That's awesome. So definitely, all I mean, we do, and everybody that has now, you know, that are passionate race car drivers or love motorsports there's been an evolution for the past 10 maybe 15 years that fitted drivers are better and also better in their minds and not only in motorsports but in every sport now uh, they have proven to be you know there's a that's like the next level you have to be fitted uh, yep. what are some of the advices or give us some tips about what you would tell uh, us that are trying to achieve that dream or want to still be there how can we prepare physically um, and eating wise? Because I think, at least for us in the U.S., 
the food and the produce here is a problem. Um, we have so much, we're so spoiled with uh, soft drinks and snacks and all these things. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm part of that. Uh, what tips would you give us about physical and eating wise that can help our, um, us to be on that next level or at least, you know, to be prepared for that opportunity? Yep. Nope, I would say if you can't just get out and go for a run or even if you can try to schedule at least three times a week where you where you go out and even if it's going for a run where you start out trying to run a mile, two miles, just building up on that. And then once you kind of can keep, you can do three miles. And then the big thing for me to do is just keep, get a timer of yourself. And then you kind of always, I'm like I said before, competitive. So let's say, okay, one day I run 25 minutes and I go a certain distance. So that when I go out next time, I got to make sure I beat myself that 25 minutes. So I'd say that that kind of gives me that motivation and, and people like that that work out and that are especially being car racers or people that like racing, we're all very competitive. So anything like that kind of gets you, gets me and probably would get all the people out there running and being active. And I know just even weightlifting and doing something, if you can try to find find a friend that, that likes either weightlifting or running and work out with them, that definitely helps a lot. Awesome. As far as as far as eating goes, um, I'd say, like you said, snacking and stuff like that. Um, I'm a sna I like snacking too at, at before I go to bed or even at night. But I do a lot more healthier stuff now through GT Academy. Where if you have, you kind of get rid of. Try not to buy stuff that you think is good or you're gonna eat. Because then if it's in the house, you probably <laughs> it. right. So just get like I do a lot of like uh, trail mix, so pe unsalted peanuts, raisins, and stuff like that. That if I'm kind of hungry or um, let's say I'm, I'm racing on my sim and all of a sudden I kind of get that you're kind of like oh I need something to eat I go for some peanuts or something healthier rather than you know I mean potato chips or a soda so I'd say just if you don't want to eat stuff don't buy it and just leave it at the store. <laughs> that's awesome that's great that's a good advice I'm going to be watching this video again and taking notes okay because I need all this yeah. uh, again if you have guys if you have any comments um, I know some of you are watching. If you have any any questions for Nick, I'm going to double check if um, I'm going to open a new window here and I'm going to see if anybody has posted a comment uh, just to make sure that my YouTube live control is not working properly. Uh, just give me one second here okay. and I'm going to go to our stream at the moment. Let's see. Let's go to the channel. It says live now. Sweet. Okay. Um, um, I know some of you are watching. If you have any, I'm going to mute it because I don't want to hear myself twice. And the comment section is on that side. Okay, so, so far no comments. But guys, feel free. <laughs> Apparently we're covering everything that people are thinking about. So that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. uh, feel free to, you know, ask any questions to Nick. Uh, if you don't know about GT Academy, I'm going to run them a little bit about GT Academy. Uh, GT Academy is a basically it's a program that takes you from the simulator uh, to be a racing uh, professional driver for Nissan. Uh, PlayStation and Nissan have come together to build this this uh, this program, and you get through it by racing on the PlayStation, and then they choose the top 30 of the country. And then you go to finals, and, get, and and then you go through a week of testing, and then they pick one winner. And Nicholas was the winner for 2014. Uh, I think there's been four GT Academies, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, correct. Four GT Academies. So every year they have one, um, and it spread like crazy. I mean, from Australia, they're doing it now there, uh, Europe, everywhere. So it's a huge program, and it's proven to have, you know, it's giving an opportunity to the guys watching the TV or just watching on the other side of the racetrack uh, to be there um, that don't have the funds to have a race car or, I mean, it's, uh, having a race car is millions of dollars a year and some of us don't have, but GT Academy, PlayStation and Nissan are giving the opportunity for regular sim racers on their computers, on their, on their PlayStation uh, to come on board, test the skills, and compete against the best of the world, and have a ride um, on a Nissan GTR. 
Um, so, Nick, the video of Dubai just finished. I'm going to okay. replay it again a little bit. 24 hours of Dubai. So, you're preparing for Dubai. You do how many races you did? Maybe six before Dubai? I know. I think we did probably 14, I think, 14 races. races. Wow. Yep, we did a bit. Yep. And then the last one, like you were saying, was that night race at Donington. So, that definitely prepared us for just that night racing and, and how everything is kind of it's a lot different at night compared to, to daytime racing. And as you're going through these races, uh, are you seeing you improving yourself or what are the things that you're learning or um, maybe some scary moments that you had? Yeah, no, I, uh, I know um, like the first race we're kind of in slow in our race cars that we raced the final race at GT Academy with. And then as we kind of progressed, we just slowly built up where we were in group N cars with sequential transmissions and then GT4 cars with real sequentials where you don't even have to use the clutch at all. <laughs> and just seeing, seeing definitely that was stuff with dreams come true, just where I always wanted to drive stuff like that and, and to getting to do it at GT Academy and in my driver development program was really neat. But as, as a driver too, I felt like I was progressing. I know, um, like I said before, where I was building up towards in the end of my driver development program I felt like I could go out and try to go as fast as I could right away where I didn't have to take a whole session or whole race to run my fastest lap at the last lap so I was able to come out quickly and, and go right away but there were definitely some some scary moments I remember in driver development program I remember one of the races in the GT4 car it was a standing start and I remember I, I stalled the starter I got going and it, it stalled it while well, all of a sudden a guy comes from behind slams in the back of me Yikes. And knocks the exhaust, knocks my exhaust off, or knocks knocks it apart. So at that point, I didn't know. I was just trying to come through the the pack and and get a good solid finish. Well, I ended up getting black flag for too being too loud. So that was <laughs> the, not the best day of the driver development program. And I remember being depressed about it. But it was something that I, I had a lot of fun and I learned from it, and it it prepared me a lot for Dubai. It prepared you a lot, and it gave you that racing license that you need. Exactly. For Dubai. Um, and so going to Dubai, in between these 14 races that you guys did, uh, you were like obviously you were training physically, yep. and you were training on the track too, and then you were doing races. So it's basically just a life of a race car driver, basically. Exactly, yep. And, and then we. Go ahead, you can go. And then we uh, basically we got done November 4th. We flew back home from um, UK, and then I was basically in Wisconsin until I flew out December 29th. So from that point on, I didn't really do much driving. I did a lot of sim sim work for on Dubai. I got the track and was able to run hour stints on the track, and then I just kept working out a lot. And that was basically where it was like you kind of go from getting to drive a car every day coming home and you're, the thing you get to drive is a, is a, is a game on your, with the steering wheel but mm -hmm. it definitely, I, I got enough of the stuff that in that two and a half months that it gave me the drive and determination to continue that workout through December and, and November to, so I felt prepared for Dubai. So in two and a half months you raced 14 races and all and yeah. so you won GT Academy two and a half months later you finish all these races, all this training, you fly back home. Yep. And then you fly to Dubai from home? I actually flew to London and then I stayed there for a few days. I, I flew out the 29th of December and I flew to London and I kind of basically just stayed in London for just to get acclimated with the time change. And then I, on, on January 1st I flew to, to, to Dubai and then we did radical testing at, at the Dubai Autodrome kind of to get situated with the track and learn it and then we had a couple of days off where we got to do some fun things like go to Ferrari World nice. and, and Yas Marina circuits so that was really cool and then uh, we did some we did our testing our physical testing where they would kind of see how well we worked out in that time we were at home and then basically Wednesday came around where we were starting to test on on track and we were all ready to go for the race all right and um Coming to the race at Dubai, obviously watching the episode where um, your parents surprise you 
at the track. You didn't know they were going to be there, and they show up on the garage as soon as you get off from the car or one of the practices. I mean, what were you thinking? It was definitely, I remember getting out of the car, and, and you're living your dream when you get to drive a GTR, uh, GT3 car, Nissan, around the track. And then you get out of the car and talking to the engineer, talking to the mechanic, saying, hey, the car was a lot of fun, had a blast. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, my parents are there. So that made the, made the dream even better. And I'll always, I'll always remember that moment, too, where they were, they were here, to show, to, here to share the incredible experience with me. And then I knew, okay, the race can start. I'm, I'm ready to go here, and let's have some fun. That's awesome. Uh, talk to me now about the stints and how did that work. I know it's 24 hours, and I'm watching you guys even doing a little bit of high-end coordination in the, in the garage while you're waiting. Or um, that was no, I mean you didn't do any of that. No. Okay, we're watching some footage of uh, you basically, or. Your team driving on board. Now we're seeing Florian sleeping on an air mattress. Uh, the stints. How was divided, or you know, which time do you drive a night or a day or? Yep. So basically, uh, based on practice times and different experiences through our driver development program, they figured out what times would be the best for us to race at. So Florian, being a pro driver, he started the race. Being a lot of cars in a close proximity, he had the most racing experience. So they decided he was he was going to go there. Then it was going to be Gaetan, um, Ahmed, Ricardo, and then I. So then basically, I, my first stint wasn't until I think seven, eight, eight o'clock at night. So I was right away in the dark. Was so basically, all dark or was the sun yeah, going down? It, it was. It was by the time I got in, it was completely dark. So that was that was kind of a little wow. scary. <laughs> so, you know, I've never being out on with ninety six cars on track. So luckily, a couple cars dropped out, so you're probably down to around 85, 86 cars by the time I got in the car. But I remember it was before the, it was a little tense where you're like, okay, I just want to get in the car. But once you got settled in there and, and we were running really well, it was just about being clean, consistent, and, and you have, have so much fun. I joke with people. The, I only remember really three laps of the entire my oh, entire stint. Wow. Basically, my out lap, the one lap where he called me to come in, and then my, my final lap where I was coming on pit road just because the time went by so fast. That's intense. Were you able to get any sleep before your stint? I mean, you know that the stint was until the night time. Did you get any rest? or I mean, um, Between my first, so my first stint, I think I got in at 7, and then I ran until like 9, so then I got out of the car at 9, and then I... I ate, had something to eat, and then I quick. I think I got slept for maybe an hour, if that. And then basically, I kind of. You know, there's so much going on where you want to see how the car's doing, and and you, you you. I got along with the team really really well, and 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 wanted to kind of help them as much as I could. So I didn't really sleep that much. I just slept enough just to kind of get by and. And once you get in the car and you're around the car, the adrenaline kind of carries you the rest of the way. So I wasn't really tired. But then I got in the car again. Um, I think at like maybe 4.30, 5 o'clock. So that was a lot of fun too where my I just got out of the car right as the sun was coming up. So it was kind of neat that we got through the night. Oh, 4, 4 a.m.? Yep, oh, exactly. Wow. Okay. So I, I was in the car again then. So I got got to kind of see the sun come up and, and, and that's where I had the flat tire too. So that was another awesome. experience where I, whereas all of a sudden I kind of felt the car was driving funny, but I radioed in saying, hey, I think I got a vibration and all of a sudden the tire went flat. But that was a good experience too that prepared me for the racing that I'll do in the future, how to deal with that situation and, and how not to wreck the car. And uh, we have a question here for one of our viewers, uh, Justin. Uh, hi Justin, uh, he asked, now that we talked about Dubai, and that was like a huge racing experience, he is asking what aspects of driving professionally has surprised you the most? What aspects of driving professionally? Um, I would say probably just the like I said before, where it's um, you got to be hundred or like on your outlap as fast as you can go. I'd say just growing up, I remember watching a lot of racing where it was more just endurance, where you kind of slowly take care of your equipment, especially the endurance side of it, and then get kind of get to the end, and then you kind of push. But stuff, the equipment, I think, and like you said, the evolution of the car and, and people physically has gotten so much better that people can. Like they say, the 24 hours of Le Mans and the 12 hours of Sebring, they're almost like sprint races now, that it's going out and running as fast as you can. 
So I'd say that as aspect has definitely changed than when I, when I thought thought of racing was maybe just more of endurance, just saving the car and getting to the end. But professional racing is basically is running as fast as you can for <laughs> as long as you can and, and, and being as prepared as you can physically and mentally and, and, and the car running as good as it is is just the keys to success. That's awesome. So it kind of relates to the sim where the car can handle a lot of shift and exactly. brake and all that. So that's great to yeah. hear. Um, personally, after the race was finished, you guys obviously finished in the podium, which is amazing. I mean, you guys, and you almost beat uh, your mentor, uh, Rob, right? He, like he made a comment, it's like, I'm, I was so happy that you guys were behind me. And <laughs> so you finished the race and you walked to the podium. How do you feel? How does, I mean, what it was just a, 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 like a, a dream come true just to come to Dubai, especially like we were the first year with the the Nissan GTR GT3, um, and be running in the A6 AMP class. We knew going there, okay, this is a big, the big, you know, I mean, gulp that we were a big swallow here, where it's a lot of cars, a lot of competitors, strong competitors, and then to come there and and run just a clean, steady race like we did, and then to be able to finish on the podium and finish fifth overall was just. Just uh, it makes all those long days in the weight room or working out on the sim all worthwhile, and and it even gives you more more drive to to keep pushing and keep doing this. That's awesome, man! You guys did amazing. I mean, from Thanks. and that gives us so much encouragement to be like, hey, you know, I can have this opportunity and I can, you know, show my skills or you know, you know, if I keep training, if I keep eating healthy, uh, if yeah. I keep on the sim, you know. You know, you never know uh, where you're going to end up. Um, exactly. And that just shows how good. When Darren Cox, um, Nissan, created the program, he just took something. Guys like us, we're passionate about racing. We love, like, sim racing. We spend hours doing it, and, and we want we can't get enough of it. And Darren recognized that and said, hey, I wonder if I give these guys an opportunity to race professionally for Nissan. And he saw that and, and capitalized it. And I think with Ian and everyone, you're seeing the success of it. And... And that just all comes down to passion and wanting to do the best that we can. That's it, yeah. Passion is a big thing. Uh, before we move on to the future, I always wanted to ask just a little bit. I'm going to cut up a section right here. Um, uh, the sim to the real life. Uh, we know that it's not you know, exactly the same. We don't have the G forces. Uh, um, but a lot of teams now are using the simulator to train and obviously because it's so expensive to get on the track um, just to teach you maybe for an hour but you get into sim a whole lot maybe um, when you were training yeah I, I thought the sim was definitely a, even the difference between like my what I kinda have the sim stuff at home compared to what we had at GT Academy where you're in a you're in kind of a just even a cockpit of a car and you're doing the sim stuff that that just kind of gets you in that mindset right away too, and you're not when you're out on track or even when you're out in the sim, you like you said you don't have the G's and stuff. So in the sim, I think it's kind of harder to run quicker times because you're not you're not you don't have that feel. You all got to just use your hands and your eyes and your ears, so you're kind of relying on those senses more. So it's a lot. I think it's when you prepare for a kind of the sim race, maybe it's not physically as demanding, but it's that mental kind of that can prepare you more because it's. It's, you're dealing with those those three sensory details a lot lot more than what you would in a in the race. And you take those uh, those uh, those sensors to the track. Like, do they do they transfer? Like, do you see? You know, do you know the track? Do you see where you're going? Do you use your eyes or? Yep. There's different. Like, like you said to this. There's the sim stuff is getting so good that is I if I can prepare for for Watkins Glen or Road America or Laguna. Um, by coming into a corner, I see there's a tree or there's a skid mark where that I use for my break point, and then I get to Laguna and, and that tree is there. <laughs> and kinda, you kind of know you got to try. Obviously, you don't go out there right away and slam on the brakes if that's <laughs> your brake marker because it might be a little different. But you can kind of use some of that, some of that information, and, and you also feel more at home too when you prepare run a lot of laps. Like I know when I ran Dubai a lot before I went there, you kind of show up at the track and you feel like, oh, 
just another day here and you kind of feel a lot more comfortable and you can get out on track and be faster right away. So you ran the buy on the sim before you got there. Yep, awesome. exactly. I mean, it's been a huge development and a lot of teams, all the teams, I mean, I mean including the F1 that is the highest level of racing, uh, well, and, and you got the Endurance Series, but they are in, in the simulator all the time also. Um, which it gives us more encouragement to be like, yeah, we're on it too. We can yeah. get there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we have a few more questions. Uh, I guess people are just now tuning in, more people. And uh, before we talk about future, let's tackle these questions right quick and then we move okay. on. Well, this is about the future. So they say, uh, Doug says, what are your driving goals with Nissan? Um, maybe future wise, I think he's referring to. Yep. So. Yep, my driving goals with Nissan would definitely be to to con just to try to get to the 24 Hours of Le Mans with Nissan's, like they said, the LMP1 car that they they debuted this year. Yeah, uh, it's just a just a dream to. I remember watching 24 Hours of Le Mans, and I think that's my my passion or my goal, my top goal, would just to be able to go to to the 24 Hours of Le Mans with Nissan and hopefully and eventually get a get a podium and get an overall win for them. But I think just in a short term kind of um, race in the States, kind of get, get my feet wet just with racing, get experience, and then kind of move on maybe to World Challenge and the GTR, and then possibly over overseas in LMP2, and then kind of slowly step up to that endurance racing side of it. Because I really love, like when I ran the 24 Hours of Dubai, it was something I really enjoyed. Um, and I like the team aspect where you're sharing the car with others and, and just more of that longer stints. I feel like that fits my my physical side of side of me and mental side of me where I, I really enjoy doing that. So I'd say hopefully that's that's a goal where we get to the 24 hours of Le Mans and get an overall win for Nissan in the future. That's awesome, man. That's great. And I hope you, you guys reach that goal. And uh, definitely LMP1 is a, it's awesome. And the, the car that you guys came up with is amazing. It throws flames from the top of the hood. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and I think I saw a picture of... Uh, of uh, Steve, Yan, and you just looking inside of the car, I think somewhere on Facebook that Nissan posted. Yep. Uh, yep. But that's great to know. Another question from Craig. He says, uh, what would you say to somebody waiting to compete in GT Academy? Any words of wisdom? Um, I'd say just to never give up. I know, like I said three years ago, where I wasn't, wasn't quick enough to get inside that top 32, um, I just kept pushing and kept, if you have a dream or, and just any, it goes with anything in life, if you have a dream and you have passion, just put forth all your effort to achieve that because no matter what happens, you gave it all you had. And for me, it worked out well where I was able to get inside that top 32 and compete. But you never, if you don't take an opportunity and make the most of it, you never know what can happen. So I would say just do your best and, and never give up. And if you do that, Stuff will it will happen and you'll end up getting lucky and fortunate and and be like me where you you just achieve your dream and and you'll be happy to wake up every morning because you're you're living your your childhood dream. All thanks to Nissan and GT Academy. There you go. Uh, now moving to the future, uh, I know that you're waiting on GT Academy uh, or Nissan now Nissan to send your your schedule for 2015, um, but. I saw that you were doing a little bit of things like you were helping out at a karting camp maybe for the kids at Road America. Yep. Tell us a little bit about that. Yep, um, I'm also, I kind of helped Road America's being so close and Road America's been so nice through this through this experience. Every, all the entire community has been very supportive. Road America especially, I enjoy doing kind of a teen, teen driving schools where you, you kind of, you start kind of sitting different cards and put teens next to you that can have them drive while you give them different scenarios or have them do braking challenges and stuff like that and I feel like it, it helps me give back to the community because there's there's so much stuff on the road with teens that you try to put them in a situation that probably will save their life or save another person's life and I've kinda, it kinda gives you that fulfillment and that that purpose that I feel helps a lot for when I'm not at the racetrack. That's great man, um, really good stuff. Now. Uh, Racing in the U.S. and racing in Europe, I know that your highest goal is Le Mans, uh, which is, I think, for everyone, is a goal. Uh, what I know um, we've seen the sport grow in the U.S. Um, 
slowly, but it's growing a lot. Um, Europe is definitely in another level, um, but kind of like the U.S. is catching up, we're just, you know, going there. Would you feel more at home racing in Europe or being actually in the local U.S. with Nissan? Um, I think it just it just kind of depends on what series or what car kind of too. I know the tracks, everything in the U.S. Like you said, I think with the two door and uh, it's really starting to take off. So if if GT3 like they are next year going to be in the two door class um, where they're going to make GT3 spec part of that that racing series where they're running the endurance racing, I know I'd feel very comfortable and at home there. Just in the GTR being had that I ran it at the 24 hours of Dubai. And then growing up, kind of, and racing at different tracks around the country, um, I feel very at home just with the culture and with fans that watch GT Academy. They come up and say hello. I watched here. <laughs> I know that would definitely kind of gives you that at home feel. But I know um, through the driver development program, I grew pretty close to the the crew at RGN Motorsports over in England. So it, it all kind of depends on what if I was racing over in, at RJN in their GT3 car in the Blanc Pain series, I know I'd feel very comfortable there. But if I was over in the States racing the GT3 car or even an LMP2 car at Laguna Seca, Walkings Glen, Sebring, those tracks you kinda you you play on a sim, so you kinda feel at home there and you're only how many only a flight away from from my parents or at home. So that right. part you definitely feel feel so there's positive pos pros and cons to each one of them. But I'd just be happy to to be in a car racing for Nissan right. anywhere. <laughs> so you just want to race no matter where. Exactly. Do both of them if I can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, so well, we're coming to a closing, guys, and uh, thank you, Nick, so much for this hour. I think we spent an hour. And um, you're welcome. Thank you very much for having me. I'm glad. Hopefully, everyone enjoyed it. And and don't be afraid if you ever want to do it again sometime. I really appreciate telling my story and. And talking with you guys, the sim, the sim racers that that make this dream a reality for me. Definitely. Any uh, any last words for? Uh, no, we we already said some wisdom words, but any any other things that you would like to say? Uh, um, I just I'd say probably just keep keep racing on on sim racing. Any anything you do or any racing is going to help for sure. And just like I said, I don't know plans for GT Academy this year, but. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep working out, and and even if if it's just keep behind the wheel. Even if it's taking your your little um, your your wife's minivan to an auto <laughs> or something, just to get active and get yeah. fulfill that that drive for your competitive competitiveness. Just do something and and get involved either with your local SCCA or local racing organization. Because even if you might meet someone there that. That hey, it might give you a shot and spec me out a race, or just if you want, if if racing's your passion, just do the best you can to make it make it your your career, because then you'll never have to work a day in your life. That's awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching, and uh, we're gonna have a replay of this. I'm gonna be able to edit it and uh, have it ready for you guys. And thank you, Nick. Thank you, your yep. family. And um, well, if you. Continue to follow up Nick on Facebook and on his website. You can check him out at Nicholas Hammond, two N's at the end, <laughs> dot com. Uh, follow him on Twitter. And um, Nick should be getting pretty soon his schedule for 2015, and he's super excited about it. Um, and we are too to hear about. Um, stay tuned. This was Romer with Live Motorsports. Check us out on Facebook also. We, have, uh, we are Sim Racers. And uh, check us out on Facebook, livemotorsports.com. And thanks again for everything. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, thanks for the questions, Craig and Doug and Justin. We'll catch you later. Thank you very much.